One of the most spiritually esteemed uh, members of the community uh, that formed around the Prophet والسلام, of course we are referring to Fatima Az-Zahra radiallahu anha one of the perfect women, one of the women of Jannah this was the daughter of the Prophet والسلام, and Khadija bin Khuwaylid and she was the youngest daughter of the Prophet والسلام, and she's known as Az-Zahra which could mean the, the radiant one could also mean the flower and she was very, very close to the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, there is no one, and of course she means male or female, there is no one who resembled the Prophet ﷺ more closely. In their appearance, in their manner of speaking, in their manner of sitting, in their manner of walking, then Fatima az Zahra radiallahu anha, there is no one more similar to him than her. And you get the sense that they were very, very close. The Prophet was close to all of his children. But it's mentioned that when he saw Fatima az Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa anha, and she was approaching a gathering, he would stand up in honor of Fatima. And sometimes he would come to her and very tenderly rub her eyebrows and kiss her between her eyebrows. She was sometimes referred to as the mother of her father because of the great shafaqah, the great compassion that she had for the Prophet ﷺ. One story that sometimes is very difficult to read, uh, but nonetheless displays her love, her care, her protection for the Prophet ﷺ, uh, her protectiveness rather, of the Prophet ﷺ, is when he was praying, this is before the Hijrah, he's in Mecca, and he's praying at the Kaaba, and he goes down to make uh, sajda, and they come and they dump a camel entrails onto the blessed neck and head of the Prophet ﷺ. Now the first thing that we have to talk about, the Prophet ﷺ even being assaulted, in this vicious, nasty way, it did not break his composure at all. Now, all of you fiqh students, I think, it was, it was the blood nudges, it was, it was, was the prayer. Stop. That's not what this is about. Right? But anyway, the Prophet ﷺ was in sujood, and Fatima is there, clearing the entrails off of the Prophet ﷺ, cleaning him as he prayed. The Prophet ﷺ finished his prayer and he saw Fatima screaming at them. She was cursing them. She was weeping. And he said, fear not my daughter. Allah will protect your father. And then he turned to those people who were mocking him and ridiculing him. And he said, Billahi alaykum. I petition God about what you've done to me. And every one of them died at Badr. One of the other uh, stories that I really love about, uh, because this story speaks to not only who Fatima was, but also who the Prophet ﷺ was. That he had no interest in turning the Muslim community into a space where his family received preferential treatment or they were esteemed or they were you know using their position of closeness to him to nepotistically take the money or Fatima had very hard labor around her home so much so that it's mentioned in books of history Waqidi and Ibn Sa'd that she had scars on her shoulders from water pitchers that she used to carry she used to work around the house until her entire hand was covered in calluses. This is the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While he is the de facto, he is the real leader of the Arabian Peninsula. He's the de facto ruler of the, of the, of the Hijaz, of the Jazeera. His daughter is working until she has blisters covering her hands. She came to the Prophet Wasallam and she said, this was after Khaybar. And of course with Khaybar, that Khaybar brought lots of wealth to the Muslim community, unprecedented levels of wealth in the Muslim community. And she, knowing the right time to ask, as a daughter 
normally does. You know, I have two daughters, you know, shout out to my daughters, my kids and Asia. You know, daughters know when to ask. So she came to the Prophet after Khaybar. I could really use some higher help. You know, things are just difficult. The Prophet told her, everything that I have, I have already promised it to the Ahlul Sufa. Right? The people of the bench, Abu Hurairah and those with him, these people that were indigent, poor, sitting in the masjid just tatabu'a, right? Bi khutawati Rasulullah following every solitary step of the Prophet just waiting for him to say something. These were the Ahlul Sufa. The Prophet told his daughter, everything in my possession, I have already pledged it to them. But I'll give you something that will make your workload more manageable. After you finish praying, say Subhanallah 33 times. Say Alhamdulillah 33 times. And say Allahu Akbar 34 times. And you will find that your, lo that your load is lightened. Look at the, like when we think about our children, and them coming to us and expressing, you know, frustration about their material circumstance. How many of us could even give them advice like that, number one? Number two, how many of them could accept that? Dad, I just told you I needed a car. You told me to read a juice of Quran every day. What was that? She accepted that. And because of that, we have that tasbih of Fatima that we do after all of our prayers. And then something happened financially when they were actually able to purchase servants. And all accounts, she treated them like family. That was just the character of Fatima Az-Zahra, a lover of her father, an exemplar in our community, a true follower of her father. You know, the Prophet ﷺ was with Fatima, and he whispered something into her ear, and she started weeping. You know, she started crying, you know, weeping profusely after he whispered to her. Then, he whispered something else into her ear, and she started laughing. And people were kind of like, yo, what's, you know, what's, what's going on here, right? So the Prophet ﷺ, um, you know, people came and they asked her, what, what did he say to you? And she said, anha, he told me that he would be departing soon. He told me that he would be leaving soon. And that made me sad. So I started weeping. Then he told me I would be the first of his family to join him meaning that she would pass shortly after he did, and that made me happy. Whoever loves to meet God, then God loves to meet them. So she said, the Prophet ﷺ told me that I would be passing soon after him, and that did not produce anxiety in her. That did not produce fear in her. Oh my God, the Prophet ﷺ is telling me that I'm going to die soon. That actually produced happiness in her, that I won't have to long for my father, that I will be with my father, and, of course, all of the prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ have been realized. So, he passed, and then maybe very short time after that, maybe five months, she passed away, right? And, you know, the Prophet ﷺ is buried, of course, was buried in the apartment of Aisha, and Fatima is buried in Baqiya. You know, they were inseparable uh, in the dunya and inseparable in the akhirah. Subhanallah.